flank up. Right, I'm in the front corner. Yeah, of the yeah I know. By the front door. He's I probably watching the stream. He's he's watching the stream. So um, we need to get out of here. So we're gonna run. Okay, I'm gonna turn off mic, Brian. <laughs> this is insane. Okay, you ready? Let's go. You see me? Oh. You. Okay. Oh! Oh! He's shooting! He's shooting! Brian, I'm gonna. Can you see me? What the hell? Oh, I think I'm, I think I'm fucking starving or I'm sick or something. I just went unconscious, man. <laughs> oh shit! I don't want to die. <laughs> Not today. Ah. Uh, well, and now it's time for some question, for a question, and then we might call the stream. That's why we need that to. Was pretty awesome. We really need to improve the indicators, though, because that's kind of bullshit. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Who came up with that idea? Well, the good news but is you no longer feel forcefully. I do no longer feel forcefully. That was pretty awesome. For you, maybe. I'm still running in the dark. <laughs> and my pistol's on the ground, and because of that unconscious glitch, I'm probably sliding across fucking Chernerus. Is that what happens? Well, at least he won't be able to loot you. <laughs> is that what happens? Yeah. Should I is disconnect? A... Is there a way to hot switch off the torches? Like if you've got a pistol with a torch, do you have to literally go to the inventory and drag it off? Or can you have a toggle? Uh, um, you'd have to right click. Yeah, you have to go into the inventory at the moment. We don't have any keys. Uh, that, those kind of control issues and stuff uh, we'll, we'll deal with later on. Any plans on adding maybe... I mean, you said previously that you'll be able to attach maybe a, a torch to a gun with some duct tape. Maybe if you have a pistol, you could do the whole cop thing where you hold the torch with the pistol over the top. Yeah, it requires a fair bit of logic, though. Like, you will have seen at the moment the uh, torch... Um, is clipped on to the pistol. The logic is very important with how it works. And I guess this is one of the big evolutions that Daisy made. So in armor, the things that you attach to your weapon sort of turn on a functionality on that weapon. It's very clever. With Daisy, that didn't really quite work for what we wanted. So we had to we had to come up with something a little bit new and uh, so what we did is we made them actual entities. So in order to be able to hold two entities in your hands, we'll need to do something a little bit more funky. And that would involve quite a lot of work. That, it's not, I'm not saying we don't want to do that. That's definitely something we want to do so that you can have something in each hand. But that's going to require a very radical change. It's like the testers have been reporting a lot of bugs and concerns. Zombies uh, running through walls inside buildings. What's some other stuff, Brian? Um, Razor brought up some really good points. So there's a lot of bugs that they're saying, look, these should really be fixed for the alpha. But the problem is, if we fix them, they're so risky that we could yeah. screw them up and then we delay everything by a couple of months. If we get the alpha out and it's roughly okay enough that a lot of people can play it, then that gives us a bit of breathing space. It means we can do what's called a branch, so we can branch the code off, and the programmers go off and they work on their little areas, and then as they uh, fix their, or, or finish their work, they'll merge it back into the main trunk. And we're, we're at the moment we're running two branches on, or sorry, two 
builds on Steam. So there's an experimental and a stable, and each of them are different characters. So your character on stable won't get killed if you go to experimental. However, because of the way Steam works, you've got to be really careful. It's not a simple switch between builds. Um, yeah, so we've we've really got to we've really got to reach that point. And as you can see, uh, I mean it's it's all right. We've just we've just got scaling issues. That's our main problem. This is so much in the world, like orders of magnitude more than we've ever put inside the real virtuality engine on you know armor or or that before. So that's the hurdle that we're jumping over. Okay. And that's because like all the zombies and loot is kind of pre-generated, right? It's not waiting for players to walk there. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's um, a, a, that's exactly right. And we're doing that with zombie respawns. That's why zombie respawning's not um, currently in the build. Um, yeah. Uh, there was someone brought up a really good point on Reddit. I had a while ago. I had this mini argument with him. I can't remember his name. And we're talking about scripts versus the engine. So whether you do something in script or whether you do it in the engine. And what we've really leaned towards is moving a lot of stuff into the engine because it's so much more efficient. But that means for the mod, people are going to have to accept a little bit of a, uh, a limitation in functionality. But look, I had, I had a lot of fun running around like that. And I, I think Brian did as well. So we think all we want is that People, if they really want to get involved in the alpha, people who, for example, bought Prison Architect and said, wow, that's a really cool game. And then, you know, they play it for a little bit and they're like, okay, well, there's not a lot in there at the moment. I play it for a couple of hours. And then and then a month later, right, they bring out a new update and there's guard dogs in or or contraband or, or that kind of stuff. And it's so exciting. It's the same with KSP. Like, I cannot wait until 2.3 comes out. Holy crap. Or Project Zomboid, another good example. Um, you know, th these updates come out and you're really excited. That's what we want to do with DayZ. So, if anybody even has any doubts at all, don't buy it when it comes out. It's not like three days later we're going to bump the price up. So, I hope that the people who initially buy it are the people who are really committed, they're okay with the servers being a little bit all over the place, they're okay with uh, bugs, losing characters, that kind of stuff. When we do have a stable, once we verified, like maybe within a week of the release, once we verified the stable build on Steam, because there's the two builds you can select, once we verified that stable, we won't really wipe those characters. But the experimental one will get wiped a lot. I think well, last time I played Eve, they used to do this. Yeah, I think yeah they it's, still it's a do. fairly frequent uh, thing from anything that's a large-scale multiplayer mm. that uses a database. Uh, because of all the rapid changes that may occur, things might just get flat-out removed. We might decide to test, I don't know, a Gatling gun, for example. Not that we would. But then later on, obviously, we decide, oh, come to our senses, that's ridiculous. Purge the database so mm. there's not this odd item in there. Like, um, Bohemia is really excited and committed about the whole studio is excited and committed about the future of DayZ. And there's incredibly ambitious plans. And that's what we'll be publishing on uh, on the roadmap. What All we want to do with this, this is really a proof of concept. And I feel like, I feel like we kind of have. I would give us a C minus. Yeah, I'd agree. For, I for grade? I is a C plus. Oh, sorry, you know, I meant C+. Plus. I meant C plus or B minus. <laughs> yeah, so, so C plus or B minus in terms of grade and an, and an A for effort. That would be what I'd give us. Like it's, oh, you definitely give us an A for effort. It's been, like, the amount of hours we have been working has been insane. And, you know, Brian came halfway around the world for the project. Well, so did I. Actually, I. I legitimately lost track of what day it was. When, you, when, mm. when uh, Victor you said came today. and said, see, uh, have a good weekend. I'm like, weekend? It's like Tuesday. Well, when did we last have a weekend? I don't know. That was about two, three weeks ago. But no one's forcing people to come in. The designers, well, well I said to them today, it was like, you know, God, what time are we coming in tomorrow? And I was like, look, you know, we're, we're trying to lock the... <laughs> um, you know, we're trying to uh, um, keep things uh, stable, you know, and not put yeah, new stuff in. Lock in the experience. Yeah, yeah and, um, and 
uh, yeah, and so then they were, yeah, they, they were really wanting to come in. Yeah, yeah Peter, Peter I, be, I believe Peter will be in tomorrow, so I'm going to have to go hang out with Peter. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's not like, a, it's one of those things where I think everybody on the team d desperately wants uh, to, um, to get this in the hands of consumers. So people are, are, are just, if you could just, you know, mute your mic when you're laughing at me, that would be great. I think I just uh, coughed more questions? Pepsi more into questions? my mic. <laughs> Someone was asking an interesting Am I? What the hell was that? <laughs> I don't know. Am I good? Uh, Shannon? No, it's, it's when Chris talks. Okay, uh, is can this working? I can. Perfect. Okay, I don't, I don't know what that was. Um, someone asked a question um, about sound. Will you be adding sound to things like doors, and crates, boxes that you open and so on? Yeah, we do want to do that. And that sort of ties in with what... Um, oh, here's Head Bob. I just found Head Bob. Yeah, we actually... Um, we've got our, our new full-time sound designer... Um, getting uh, acclimated to the tools and such of, uh, of Arma so he can kind of be our uh, go-to guy, kind of investing in him in the future of Daisy Audio. And uh, I know that one of the, the, the core things that uh, Vrata and Victor, uh, a couple of our animators, keep coming to me with is, when are you going to get Dean to, uh, to put sounds when you open doors? It seems ridiculous that you open a door and it doesn't make a sound. So... Uh, it's definitely something that we've been we've been talking about internally is trying to figure out how we can do it efficiently so that there's that whole nother dynamic of sneaking through a village is how much noise am I going to make if I open this metal door or, uh, you know, start sneaking through this house. It's more than just the footsteps uh, on wooden floors that will give you away if, it, if we get it done. Hey, isn't Sumrak the guy who made Namask? I don't remember. We have yeah. like armor royalty in the server. Ladies and gentlemen, I think he is very talented chap. Um, I get really distracted easily when I've had a lot of Pepsi. Sorry, Brian. No, that's fine. Uh, I don't know if you quickly saw when I pushed my inventory out before, as I was joining. Uh, you saw my inventory on the other side. That uh, it is a little bit of a bug, but what it demonstrates to you is that when you're unconscious, you can. When someone's unconscious, you can actually loot them. So now in Daisy, you can punch someone in the head, knock them out, take their stuff, and quickly run away before they get up again. But if you wear a motorbike helmet, it greatly stops shock damage because there's many different kinds of damage now. There's brute damage, there's slash damage, there's shock damage, there's biological. It's not really damage. It's more how you can catch stuff. And different items provide you different protection from that. I think I covered off on that last time. Uh, but yeah, I think that's a nice little change, and I think that might make a bit of a bit of a difference to kill on site, maybe. I guess we'll have to see. How about um, maybe stun sticks or tasers? Yes, well, I really want to do tasers, like, a lot. Uh, but it's sort of the same as throwing. If, uh, we're, Bohemia's really into this for the long term. And I think that's quite important. There's a lot of, I don't want to call them daisy clones because I don't think that's fair. There's a lot of survival games that are quite hot right now and some of them are pretty good. But I think it's very important for Daisy to not say, wow, we have to rush everything. Like we could have just put in uh, throwing the same as it is in armor, but essentially it's just a weapon where it gets kind of lobbed. We've got this beautiful physics middleware that we've implemented for Daisy. Let's use it. So rather than half-assing the flares now, we want to do them properly. 
Same with so that you can throw any object. You can push a key and you will drop any object in your hand and it'll fall down and roll around. That's what we should be doing. And I've completely forgotten what, what got me onto that. That's a good answer nonetheless. Any kind of final points you want to go over with people? Um, like I say, I guess just uh, the most important thing is don't just jump into the alpha. You really need to research it and know what you're getting into. Like, be a big don't... Disclaimer on that. Well, look, I, uh, we can put all the disclaimers we want. Uh, what the hell? It's supposed to start you with a torch. Did I not update the server? You might not have updated. The God server. damn it. Did you die? Yeah. Oh, I just pushed respawn. Oh. Well, I wanted to show people. Like, I didn't just want to talk. I wanted to do something. Later on, I hope people watch this in high def and they can see the massive difference in the inventory screen now that we have the materials. Well, we can restart for day. I can kill myself and we can kit up from fresh. Uh, I don't know. People are probably getting a bit bored. Not enough Pepsi for you. <laughs> I don't know. Jeez. What do you reckon? Uh, we can answer a few more questions. Yeah. I'll restart though because I was playing the game before on bad lighting, so I'll. Um... A lot of people are asking the question about graphic settings and if people will be able to tweak them, you know, disable um, shadows, set anti alias in a certain way so that you can see through grass, those kind of things that people min max. Look, we've changed so little of that kind of stuff because we're so focused on this core architecture that these issues are all going to come up and that, that's i guess what i mean for those really uber elite i want to be the best at day z i think there's the danger they might get a bit disappointed because we haven't dealt with that it doesn't mean that we don't think it's worth dealing with because we totally do but there's no point in us doing that before we've actually nailed that sort of core experience i guess you could say does that make sense? Like, once we've once we've got the core experience, then we can polish it. Um, yeah, Brian, I didn't update it, so this is updated now. We'll start it again, and we'll have a torch. So, all right. Oh, do you think, or should I make it day again? Yeah, we've shown night for at least what okay. uh, an hour and a half, two hours. Yeah, let's make it day again. You, uh, I should just probably say this. You got a lot of spam when you were like, "Oh, people must be bored." Yeah, no one's bored. Whatever it is that you want to stream, just stream it. If you don't feel like stopping, then just keep going. Sure. Um, I think you can sort of, you know, uh, flog a dead horse, kind of. I don't know. I'm kind of keen to bro up, but um, uh, Brian, you might want to do to save us the normal um, thing. Yeah, hold on one second. Um, yeah, we can do a bit more. I mean, the questions are good. And I, I think what's even fun as well is discussing stuff like, I know last week what we talked about, some of the things like, you know, the glinting of the scope. I really like that kind of stuff. And I am not a PVPer, but I believe PVP is critical to the day, uh, Daisy experience. Uh, and I, I, don't, I guess I don't really think of it as PvP, I think of it more as the complex interactions that the player is faced with and the decisions they make. And these terrible situations that happen, like when Brian shot that guy. Like imagine if we're a gaming group and it reminds me of the story that a guy posted I think on my Facebook about him and his son, I think I've said this before. They only had one compass between them. They were playing Daisy Mod, and the father was providing cover while the son went in. Um, they misjudged the direction that he was running, and he ended up shooting his son and wounding him. And it's so it's not so much the PvP; it's this risk that comes with it. And I think it, it really makes the experience special, even though so much of it's sort of broken. And yeah, so but but I think that in order to do that, we do have to balance. Uh, provide a level playing field but level playing field is kind of tier two tier one is make the damn thing work mm -hmm. i think everyone really agrees pvp is that little spark of randomness that makes everyone on edge if, it, if there was no pvp if you couldn't shoot other people 
it would be a reasonable zombie game. But because there's that always there's always that little spark of is he going to shoot me? Am I going to shoot him? Should I save him? Has he got a bandit? You know, there's all those random elements, and that really makes the game come together. Well, look, I would say as a pure zombie game, certainly the mod was terrible, and we're I don't even think we're at acceptable in terms of uh, if you want to look at it as a pure zombie game. But that's I guess. That's the important thing about DayZ, and I guess for me, this I don't just see DayZ as this zombie game. I see it as a type of game I'm very interested in, this context gaming uh, with risk and all that kind of stuff. So I'm really interested to see where it goes, not just with DayZ, but as a, I don't know whether you could call it a genre, but um, yeah. That's, I, well, it's, it's definitely um, one of those situations, I think Chris can agree with me, it's one of those rare games that comes along and you don't just play it two, three months. You end up playing it and nothing but it for 10, 11, 12 months. And you can't really, like, you try to play other games and you're just like, ah, I feel like playing DayZ. Yeah. Well, I think I think we're on the cusp of, I was talking about this with Marek, our CEO. There are so many people who just don't realize how difficult it is to bring out a game, any game. And how difficult it is to bring out one that's multiplayer, how difficult it is to bring out one that's sort of MMOS, and how difficult it is to do that in 12 months from when we properly started developing, and even 16, uh, sorry, 18 months since we actually formally announced the project. Like, And so we've been very close to completely screwing it up. So I think we're now at the cusp of... If we can pull this off, the scale of what we want to do is beyond anything I ever dreamed of. And what we have to do is just provide people a simple little experience now and then just build on it. 